quite a long period of my life in the same organization. It's nice to hear the other side because this side is something which is never told to us by our male subordinates. I now request Francisca Opsini. Namaskar. I am very happy that I have been called to this event. I am coming to the center of 20 years and maybe this is the second or third time I have been told to say that I have been told to say that I have been told to say that. Um, I'm Italian and I belong to a generation where I think my mother was probably the first who really spoke out and really said what she wanted. Um, and it was interesting because her generation was the first generation of women who really spoke out but who often didn't do what they said. You know, there was something in their upbringing that still made them fume and argue against patriarchal you know, double standards, which were very still were quite prevalent in Italy when I was growing up. Quite a bit of difference between me and my brother, um, at least from my father's side. But when it came to doing, she would still kind of mostly toe the line, or she would feel guilty if she didn't. And so as a literary historian, I work on sort of history of Hindi literature and Urdu and so on. I've been particularly interested in women writers and in the way in which they have grappled with the idea of a woman, woman's voice and what women can say and what women cannot say and what does the, the silence of women mean and how, how we are supposed to read it. So I just want to give you four little examples uh, starting from um, so on a, on a quite a different line, but I think, I, I mean, I hope um, some discussion will come out of it. The first example is, uh, probably a lot of you know what the Kisa Totamena, or Totamena Kikahani is. You know, this, um, again, very uh, traditional, you could say, way of saying um, Tota will speak ill of women. All women, all wives are uh, unfaithful. And the men I will respond, no, wives are faithful and good. It's the men who are, uh, who are unfaithful and, um, and don't respect their wives. And it's very interesting that probably the first book in modern times in 1870, I think, it was written by anonymously by, by, by a Jain woman in Hindi, and it was called Kisat Orat Mard. And what it tries to do, it tries to kind of speak to this tradition of the Totamena. And in fact it says the stories about women as they've been written in books, that women cannot be nechalan ne and khubsurat. They are either beautiful or they are nechalan. This is, this, the, all these stories have been written by men. Um, and so I'm here to set the record right. <laughs> and what she does, very interestingly, there's a frame story in which there's a wife who's sitting with her, with her husband, and there are women from the neighborhood who are also listening in, and they're providing a kind of chorus to the story. And every time the man says something, they say, oh, poo, you know, she is really, you know, he's lying, he's not saying, you know, we know how he behaves, huh? he's, talking, uh, he's talking nonsense. And the, and the husband comes up with this line, you know, women can either be beautiful or, or good. And she starts telling him a story after a story after a story. You know, this, um, and, and all the stories are about um, young husbands who, when the, as long as the parents are there, they sort of behave and they're married to a beautiful uh, and good woman of, um, of good birth and education. Uh, but as soon as they are become the masters of the house, they start, you know, um, they start going astray, and it's either, you know, um, it's either um, prostitutes or male friends or jua or this or that. And it's very interesting that what the stories tell and what the wife keeps telling her husband is, look, as long as the husband sort of. Um, uh, respected his wife, and as long as he listened to her, things in the house went well. You know, the 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 uh, not just not just the relationship between the two of them, but actually it's all stories about merchants. You know, even the the business went well, and the 
you know, the respect and the, and the credit uh, but as uh, what was there. But as soon as the husband starts you know, following his own desires, everything gets out of hand. So it was very interesting for me that one of the first, you know, if in fact the first book written by a woman that I know of in Hindi was this kind of saying, let me put my side on the story. Second example I want to give is by um, what I think is the greatest writer, living writer in Hindi, um, Krishna Sobhati. And it's a novel published in the late 80s called Dilodanish, so the heart and, uh, and the mind. And it's set in early 20th century Delhi. And it's a story of a vakil sahab who has his wife at home in the Haveli, uh, and his wife and mother and sister and children and all that. And then he has his mistress in the Farash Khana. And the mistress is the daughter of a courtesan of whom he was the vakil. And he actually is holding in, um, in trust the, the, the great jewels that the courtesan gave to him. And so actually the courtesan daughter who's bore him a, child, a son and a daughter is also very much dependent on him. She would be independent because she has this zeva, but it's not. He's keeping it. And it's very interesting that for the vakil sahab things are very clear. You know, on the one hand there's the wife and the haveli, and, and at one point he, also, he even says that, you know, that um, the, the kamai from my big mokadme um, is for the haveli. Anything else from the chote mote is like jeb kharch is for the mistress, um, mehek bano. And mehek bano cannot really ask for anything. So um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of indirectness. Uh, she's dependent, she feels for him, but actually the more she sees that everything is very clear for him, the power relations, the more she becomes detached. And there's a wonderful scene, a wonderful chapter in the novel, in which um, still, um, the, so the, the, the wife, who actually has everything, is a very rich household, she's incredibly jealous. She's jealous that her husband keeps going to Mahek and she has, he has these two, two children and, you know, uh, God knows what he's spending on her, where the reality is hardly anything at all. And so by, um, she 